art students, welcome to this week's short where we're gonna talk about direct quotes. More importantly, what direct quotes are and how to format them correctly according to APA 7th edition. So what is a direct quote? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where you're directly quoting someone else. So in academic writing terms, a direct quote is where you're taking another author's words and you're using them in your own writing. Now, because you're using someone else's words, there are two things that are very important when it comes to direct quotes. Number one, it's important that you include the words verbatim, meaning that you include them exactly as they are word for word. And then number two, because of this, it's important that you format the direct quote correctly to signify that it is a direct quote so the reader understands that these words came from someone else first. So to be clear, right now from the start, if you feel like you wanna change any words in the phrase that you want to use, you A, either have to paraphrase that entire phrase correctly, or B, you gotta leave it alone. Do not change any of the words if you wanna use it as a direct quote. Simple enough? Cool. Now, let's talk formatting, because this is where things can get a little hairy. So, just like a regular in-text citation, you can either format it using a parenthetical or a narrative in-text citation format. However, for direct quotes, they're going to always contain three elements. The author, the year of publication, and a source locator. Now, what is a source locator? Well, I'm glad you asked because a source locator would be something like including the page numbers if you're referencing a book, aka you want to include something so the reader can look up exactly where you found that direct quote. So like I said, a book, you would include page numbers. If you're using a video or a YouTube video, you would include a timestamp. If you're going to use a PowerPoint, you would use the slide number. If you're going to use, let's say, a paragraph on a web page or article, you found on the internet, you could indicate the paragraph or even the section heading where that paragraph is located. It doesn't matter. You just need to indicate something so the reader can find exactly where you found that direct quote from. But now that we're clear on that, let's go back to formatting. All right. So again, this is very simple. The words that are from the direct quote, you're going to surround those by double quotations indicating the direct quote. And then going back to the parenthetical and the narrative in-text citation formatting, for the parenthetical, you're going to include those three elements in parentheses. And with the narrative, what you're going to do is you're going to work the author element, maybe even the date element, into the narration of the sentence. Now, like I said, very simple, although I get it, those are empty words until you see what everything looks like for yourself. So let's go ahead and jump into my laptop where I can walk you through a few examples. Come with me. Okay, hello, welcome to parenthetical example number one. This is where the quote is located at the end of a sentence. So this reads, effective teams can be difficult to describe because high performance along one domain does not translate to high performance along another. So as you can see, the material in the direct quotations is from the original author verbatim. So that right there is your actual direct quote. And then if you'll notice, after the second double quotation, you have your three elements included in parentheses. You have the author's last name element, the year of publication, and the source locator, which in this example is a page number 470. And please note lastly that there is the period included after the second parenthesis. That is because this citation is part of the sentence, so the punctuation needs to come at the end. But let's go ahead and move on to example number two for parenthetical direct quote citations. So this simply means that the direct quote is coming at the beginning of the sentence rather than the end. So as you can see, the direct quote, just like the previous example, is enclosed in double quotation marks. And then if you'll note, the three elements are included again at the end of the sentence enclosed in parentheses followed by a period. So one more time, you have the author's name, you have the date of publication, and the source locator, which again is a page number in this example. Fairly simple, right? Now let's talk about what to do if you're including a direct quote in a narrative in-text citation formatting. Again, pretty easy, but just a little more complex. So the first example I wanna go over is the most common narrative direct, direct quote formatting. And so here, as you'll note, the author's last name element is incorporated into the narrative of the sentence. So it reads like this. 
Johnson, 2018, noted that incorporating the voice of students with psychiatric disabilities into supported education services can increase access, involvement, and retention. So let me point out a few things before I move on. Again, here's the author's last name element in the sentence. You then have the date of publication element right here directly behind the author's last name enclosed in parentheses. Now, as you'll know, the direct quote is still included in double quotations, and then the source locator is included at the end of the sentence enclosed in parentheses like you see it is here. This one is indicating a timestamp. And then lastly, the punctuation again comes after the second parenthesis because the source locator is a part of the full sentence. That was a lot to digest, so let's go through another example. Okay, so in this example, the elements are included in the middle of the sentence. So as you can see, the direct quote starts the sentence and then you would include the author's last name followed by the year of publication and then the source locator at the end of the sentence just like before. So now this sentence would read, some people are hilarious, others are painfully unfunny, and most are somewhere in between, wrote Newsom 2017 in their exploration of humor. What do you think? Not bad? Starting to get the hang of it? I have one more example for you because I would like to point out that the year element can also be worked into the narration with the author element. So in this example, the sentence would read, In 2018, Soto argued that more stimuli, such as those coming from the same modality, produce more configural processing. So let me point out a few things. You have the date element at the beginning of the sentence, followed by the author element, and then the source locator would be located at the end of the sentence, just like it has in all of these examples. Also, the direct quote will always be enclosed in those direct quotations. Again, not too bad. So these five examples are generally the most common, if not they cover pretty much all the scenarios that you'll run into when including direct quotes in either a parenthetical or a narrative in text citation. All right, smart students, thanks for sticking with me through that tutorial. I just have a couple more points to make and then you can run free from this video. The first one is, is that you don't want to overly use direct quotes in your paper. If you use too many, a lot of professors view this as lazy since you're using someone else's words verbatim and you really don't have to put much thought into it. So as a rule of thumb, I always recommend using one to two, three at most, and it better be a long paper if you're using three. I also strongly only recommend using them if it truly enhances your writing, it's a fact or figure, or the phrase is simply better said exactly how it is. In other words, if you were to paraphrase it, it wouldn't have the same impact in your writing. Otherwise, go ahead and paraphrase it just to be safe. But anyways, guys, that's it for this short. Be sure to comment down below whatever you'd like. Just say hi to me. Let me know what you're working on. I love interacting with you guys when I can. And of course, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more videos like this every week. Thanks, guys.